Kokani Glacier Provincial Park is a Canadian provincial park located in the Selkirk Mountains in the southern interior of the province of British Columbia. The park was established in 1922 and is one of the first provincial parks established in British Columbia's history. Most of the park lies at an elevation at or above 5,940 feet in elevation and offers visitors the experience of hiking on several backcountry hiking trails as well as camping at minimalistic camping facilities during the park's summer season and is a popular location for backcountry skiing in the wintertime. Kokani Glacier Provincial Park derives its name from the three voluminous glaciers contained within it, the Woodbury Glacier, the Caribou Glacier, and the Kokani Glacier, and the glacial runoff waters from these glaciers feeds more than 30 alpine lakes that lie within the park's borders, which, in turn, spill their waters downwards feeding the many creeks that also crisscross the park. One of these creeks, Kokani Creek, is also the namesake of a neighboring provincial park, Kokani Creek Provincial Park, and the creek itself is fed by the runoff waters of a lake bearing the same name, Kokani Lake. Kokani Lake itself lies at an altitude of 6,499 feet, spanning 3,900 feet in length and 1,320 feet in width, with the lake reaching an approximated maximum depth of about 330 feet, although apparently this is only an estimate, as the depth of the lake has seemingly never been officially measured. This relatively small and altogether unassuming lake is only accessible by way of a two and a half mile hiking trail and is stocked regularly with cutthroat trout, making it a niche fishing spot within the park. However, this unassuming lake was also host to one of the most bizarre and rather baffling backcountry deaths I've ever come across while researching topics for my channel, and if you've been a regular viewer of my channel, you know I've covered quite a few of these in the past, and remarkably, the victim of this extraordinary death at Kokani Lake was a member of one of the most prolific political families in Canada and was the younger brother of the current Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, a man named Michel Trudeau. Michel Trudeau was born on October 2nd, 1975 in Ottawa, Ontario. Michel was the youngest son of former Prime Minister and Patriarch of the Trudeau family, Pierre Trudeau, and his mother, Margaret Trudeau. His mother described his personality in an interview with the newspaper in 1977 as having the combination of both of her older son's best attributes, stating, quote, Justin, who is six, is a prince, a very good little boy. Sasha Alexander, who is four, is a bit of a revolutionary, very determined and strong-willed. Michelle is a happy, well-adjusted child who combined the best traits of both brothers she described of her trio of sons. Michelle would spend his early childhood living in Ottawa up until his father's retirement from politics in 1984 at which point he would relocate back to the Trudeau family's roots in Quebec, spending his teenage years living in Montreal. Upon completing high school, or secondary school as I think they call it up in Canada, a hey, don't you know buddy, Michelle, who now most often went by Mike, would study microbiology at university. However, entering into his early 20s, Mike seemingly longed for the summers of his youth he had spent in the wilderness as a camp counselor, where he could be free of the weight of his family's notoriety. And so, at age 22, Mike packed his things and relocated to Rossland, British Columbia, where he would find work at a ski resort in the area, Red Mountain Resort. Michel enjoyed the anonymity that his new location provided for him, and with his easygoing, outgoing, and generally friendly personality, he was quick to make a multitude of friends, 
although his rather odd and privileged views about certain things would come off as strange to some people that met him until they learned of his unique upbringing. While working at the resort, Mike, like many young men in their early 20s, was known to party hard, sometimes seemingly without the worry of legal repercussions, as once the cat was out of the bag about his true identity, he was said to boast of his father's connections while he was intoxicated. In early 1998, now age 23, Mike would get into a notably bad car accident whilst visiting his family back home in Quebec, an accident that has been the subject of much scrutiny and many rumors over the years, suffering major injuries in the process that would take him weeks to recover from. However, a few months later, Mike, the ever-avid outdoorsman, would organize a backcountry ski trip with some of his friends, a trip to a remote cabin at Kokani Glacier Provincial Park. On November 13th, 1998, Mike and his three friends accompanying him on the trip enjoyed their second full day of skiing in the backcountry of Kokani Glacier Provincial Park with the conditions prime for skiing, as the region had just been blanketed by a fresh layer of powder snow. The four men spent the day shredding through the fresh powder. However, by the afternoon, they were beginning to tire after a day of intense skiing and decided to begin their trek back to the cabin. As the four men were hiking along the trail near the shore of Kokani Lake, the trail that they had followed into the region, the men heard the horrific crack and rumble of a powerful avalanche ringing out around them. Within a matter of seconds, the rushing avalanche swept up the four friends, as they had almost no time to evade the avalanche's powerful rush of snowy debris. Two of Mike's friends in the party were swept downhill with the avalanche and came to a stop on the shore bank of Kokani Lake narrowly avoiding being swept by the avalanche into the lake's frigid glacial waters. However, as they scanned the horizon for the other two men, they gasped in horror when they spotted Mike and their other friend, a fellow 23-year-old man named Andrew Bednars, flailing about in the icy waters of the lake. Andrew, who was closer to shore than Mike, managed to fight against the shock of the chilly water and the weight of his soaked clothing and backpack and miraculously managed to swim his way back to shore safely. However, unfortunately, Mike, who was estimated to have been carried by the avalanche about 300 feet from shore out into the open water, was unable to do the same and soon slipped beneath the surface of the lake's waters, where he presumably drowned. In the immediate aftermath of the avalanche, another group of skiers who had witnessed the men being swept up by the avalanche hiked as fast as they could to a nearby town, where they called for the men's rescue. However, due to snowfall and the time it took for the other skiers to call for their rescue, it was dark as well, and so rescue helicopters could not be dispatched until the following morning. The next morning, Rescue helicopters arrived at the scene and found the three surviving men and evacuated them to a nearby hospital for medical treatment. However, back at Kokani Lake, the weather again began to worsen as another snowstorm raged and the lake's surface began to thicken with a layer of sheet ice. Park officials held a press conference where they stated that they would begin a search for Michelle's body in earnest once the weather conditions had improved and they were able to lessen the dangers posed by avalanches with explosives dropped by a helicopter first. The weather conditions finally improved enough to mount a recovery effort by November 17th. However, as the team of five recovery divers reached the lake, they were again repelled by the harsh environment, as they found the layer of sheet ice so thick that the boat they brought had to be towed across the ice by a helicopter in order for them to reach open water. Due to the elevation of the lake and the frigid temperatures of the water, 
the RCMP divers were limited to 10 minutes each spent in the water and were unsuccessful in their efforts to locate Michelle's body on November 17th. The following day, November 18th, they instead attempted to search the lake using a small submersible. However, a foul weather system rapidly swept into the area and forced the dive team to retreat, narrowly avoiding potential catastrophe as they loaded aboard the helicopters that were beginning to struggle to stay aloft due to the intensifying weather. Later that evening, after conferring about the search efforts and the expectations of the search team with the Trudeau family, the RCMP announced the formal discontinuation of the search efforts as the further risk to the lives of the recovery team now outweighed the need to recover Michelle's body. In wake of Michelle's passing, his father Pierre was said to have been so shocked by his death that he was never quite the same man again, and the same was often said about his mother as well. In September of 1999, just shy of a year following Michelle's death, Pierre and Justin Trudeau made a trip to Kokani Lake to see Michelle's final resting place in person for themselves, which would be Pierre's only visit to the site over the course of his life where he was said to have marveled at the beauty of his youngest son's final resting place. As Justin Trudeau described, quote, Michelle had been doing what he loved most when he died, backcountry skiing with friends in the southern interior of British Columbia, he recounted of his younger brother's death. Michelle Trudeau's body has never been recovered. Thank you all for watching.